Is that level? I'll just lower this. I've got it sitting on the roof of the car. <laughs> Is it level? What about if I sit down? You can see. I think. Maybe a bit more. Right, where were. Oh, hang on. You're on my rag. Okay. It is shaping up well. It's shaping up really well. I'm very happy with it. Um, you know, not too many surprises. Pretty much none. But uh, yeah. You know what? I'm going to lower that because it looks like. Sh I'm standing in the um, car without a windscreen in and sitting on my plenum chamber. And it makes it easy for doing around the screen. I took the screen out, it was horrendous. And I found a couple of spots of surface rust because the last guy I would think who pulled the screen out has nicked the paint um, and scraped into the galvanizing coat it's got. And therefore moisture's gone underneath it and rusted a bit of stuff, but it's not bad. There's no welding. It's just a bit pitted. And I don't even think it's worth filling. Right, so having said that, good night and welcome. This is part mm, five, I think, of our little Starly rebuild. So in this one, just been doing a heap more cleaning, and we get it in primer. So, hope you enjoy. Well, I've nearly got this the way I want it. Um, you can see down there, you can see the top of the steering rack. Um, I did manage to find the proper manual steering union. You can see it's got a small spline and a big one. Power steering has two big ones. These little guys have two little ones. And it's got an adjustable sort of slip joint there. But I'm wrapped I got that because it means I don't have to destroy the power steering ones. As I was on the window, I'll just get in here and film a bit. And there we are. So, rup, there's the spline with the elongated box, the black thing for the manual steering. And it's all done up. So that's as far as we go with this one. I'm just going to put it back together and then we'll might take the shocks out the back and yep, put him up for collection. Right, so I'm having some trouble getting this screen out. I'm nearly there now. Um, a couple of things, I've tried this and these are quite effective but perhaps more effective with the old bonded screens where you turn that and then you use the handle to pull on which I've got it right away to get the, the picture. Um, this wouldn't even penetrate the urethane, it's got a stack of urethane in it. So then went for this boot knife, that's from local hardware, it's got quite a thick blade so it doesn't flex to get up under. I mean I can get under now because I've already cut it, but the thing I've cut it with is what I took the old ones out with, and that's this old spatula which I bought to scrape bricks at the old house. Now that was 2000 or something, 1998 or something, I don't know. No, it was before that, it was about 95. Um, and it dulls quite easy, so I've just got a, a what do you call it, a file just to dress the corner of it. And it's only a cheap one, but I've been able to get up and slice under with it. But I've had to sort of slash it. So the screen's cracked here. You always crack the laminated ones when you take them out, like that. Um, I should probably put goggles on. And just going down and sort of going around it. To unzip it, but I'm nearly there. Just a pain in the neck. But I need to get this out to paint it now. The Sigma is quite easy because we had a four door and we could roll the windows down. And the front and rear glass was bonded in with the mastic and a hot wire, which is easy because you can just cut through it and literally kick them out. You can sit in a passenger seat or whatever and just put your boots on the screen and push the things out. They're fairly easy, even though I cut that one out. This is urethane which is a lot better in terms of, you'll never get screen leaks with it, but it means taking the screens out is a bit more difficult. Um, and the other thing is, it's got four bonded screens in it. It's got this front one, the back one's bonded in, and so are the two side ones on these three door cars. So the only ones that you can roll down, obviously, are the two doors. So I'm gonna paint around the back ones. I've figured out a way to do it, which I think it'll look tidy. It has to look tidy, otherwise I'm not doing it. But this has to come out, and the reason is, it's sandblasted, it's scratched where the wipers have been, there's a bullseye in it, so I'm not interested in having the screen. So this dulls fairly quickly, but it means I can get the thing out 
the red car's gone. We called, well, I called them, I think 9.30 yesterday morning by 10.30. The truck was here and the car was gone. All right, so hang on a minute, here we go. It's just hanging on in this corner up here, but the rest of it's loose. That should be almost there, hang on a minute. the bottom there and we're done. Well, this certainly isn't the original screen as I thought it was. It's covered in just loads and loads of urethane. Um, it's easy to get sort of the top bit off with a blade, a fresh blade. You can hear me scratching into the paint. That's less than ideal. But what has happened is there's a little bit of rust at the top. It's only very minor. So that would be on account of nicks like that, which don't get sealed up as the new screen's put in, of course, then you've, um, your moisture can't get away. So you're, you're galvanizing and everything's been sort of compromised in some areas. Well, I don't know what that is. I can't really see it very well, but you can see the paint's been scraped away, away. but you've got things like that. And probably more serious, this sort of thing here. Now it hasn't gone through, but this needs to all be cleaned up, done properly. So that's what we'll work on. Got a bit of work to do up here. You can see the clear coat's absolutely knackered, but the base color's there. A um, bit more cleaning to do in the roof. Uh, in these sorts of areas. It's not that good. Um, right, this is where I like taking screens out. <laughs> I'm sort of standing up here. This also lets me paint in the plenum. I can actually get a touch-up gun in there quite easily. Not in the far corners, that sort of stuff, but it won't matter. But it's also got to sit on while I do this. Now, what's happened through, um, obviously I mean a couple of screens. I thought this was the original screen, but I mean the car's got three or 400,000 Ks or something. We've got this sort of thing, surface rust. Now, this was exceedingly difficult to get out. And what I imagine being urethaned in, all down there. It's not bad, but I reckon we got to it in the nick of time. The blades used for cutting them out, I reckon scored the paint and affected the, um, the zinc plating, and that's how moisture's got in. So we've got to be pretty, pretty careful about this. Um, the worst of it's here. Pretty crummy. But yeah, the worst of it's there. We've got all the scaly stuff, but... I just want that to focus. Maybe I'm using the wrong glasses and I can't see very well. But we can use phosphoric acid and I'm just going to get the stuff and sort of cover up the affected areas with phosphoric acid down in there. Now, the other body we had had none of this, but then I didn't take the paint off. So the action for this thing, and you can see where, I reckon that's all from a knife or something like that anyhow. So the action for this is this. What we're going to do, here's phosphoric acid on it, then we're going to edge prime it, then of course prime it, colour, and a clear, but I'm going to use a two-pack clear in there because I need it to be much more, um, much stronger than the regular acrylic clear. The same with under in these channels here. So if the paint's been upset like that edge, then that all has to be, it has to be right because moisture will get in and that's when you get problems. So, look, it's nothing to lose sleep about. I'm certainly not going to lose any sleep over this, but it was worth taking that paint off to, um, to divulge what was underneath it. Because it's in a very, and there's also a rubber sort of cap that goes between the metalwork or between the sheet metal and the glass. So the moisture that sits in there, sits in there, it doesn't come out. Um, so anyway, we'll, we'll deal with that. Well, no cutting and replacing of metal or welding needs to be done, but... It is something that needs to be treated. Um, just a bit of phosphoric in here on a Q-tip or a cotton bud, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to go around anywhere where there's obvious 
bits of surface rust and it'll probably bubble and make some funny yeah see like that that just means there's a little bit of paint still there so I've just got to run the battery and you can probably see that a bit better yeah So we're just going to do a tiny bit of starly stalking. Let's have a look. Oh, headlights. <coughs> just want to see if there's any ones here. Uh, what do we got? This is where the new cars are. Renault. Well, that's normally with Nissan, isn't it? What am I doing in the wrong spot? Oh, they've got a Nissan dealer too. That's right. I used to work here. And I'm sure I saw it over there. There it is there. Over there. I can't see to focus it too. Yeah. It's the only one there I can see. Well, hang on, there's another one next to it. Maybe I can go. I just want to see how many they've got. Because there used to be piles, I think they. Oh, yeah, there's another one there. There's a white one. Without its rego plate, so someone's given that up. That's all there is, just two of them. I'll say farewell to our little Starley. So I'll take this one for morning tea with Mum. I bought four litres of this colour, but I kind of bought it in bits. I thought I'd be painting the engine bay prior to now. And I've had a change of heart. Um, just knocking some holes in there so it drains back in. They'll all say you can't do it, but I've been doing it for, what, 30 years? And I've still got some very, very old paint, which so far is still fine to use. So I'm going to put all this in the, you see that, it's a beautiful colour. So I'm going to put all this in this 4 litre can, but I've got another litre over there, and I'll put half of it in there. I'm tipping them only going to need half a litre just to scoot around and do the sort of non-visible bits, or at least the bits under the carpet and all that sort of stuff. And look at that colour. That is a gorgeous colour. I'm happy with that. And when you do this, these are just off cuts of timber. Um, you just want to make sure you use a, a clean one. Right. My God, that's quite strong. Um, I'll just put a bit of thinner in there and squish it around. And we are good. Right, we've got all the panels washed down. Um, that's all wet. It looks like really good paint, but it's really crummy. I'm just looking for that um, crease. There it is there. Oh, that's a bastard, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, that's not good. Actually, there's a bit of a dent there, but frankly, I might just knock it out from behind if I can get behind it. Hang on a second. No, I can't. I can't get behind it. Much stuff to feel like. Um, scars are all done as well. The the thing is, these are sort of painted in a really haphazard way. They've just got overspray underneath. They're not actually painted properly from behind. And in flicking the bonnet over, I've got some some residue from stickers and that sort of stuff. But again, that's kind of oversprayed in there. Um, in there, you can see that. So we don't have to be overly over the top of this. I might prime the panels off the car and I'll paint the green under here and 
I'll paint the engine bay and sort of the jams and under the doors, inside the doors, inside the car, that sort of thing, hang the panels and just paint the whole thing in one. I haven't started cleaning up the tailgate yet. That's just more a real estate thing. There's no room. So I'll just keep pressing on. So edging more forward, getting ready to... I've got to pull the plimmy out in a second. You know, get rid of these. I keep finding other clips. I keep finding little stickers, you know, those little circular things and bits and pieces everywhere. Yeah, there's some over there. Look. All right. See? Um, so, yeah, I've just got to take these out, get a heat gun, take those stickers off, and get rid of all these dents. I've got an idea for these seals. I'm not sure how great it's going to be, but well, we'll try it. But, yeah, yeah, it's going to test me out, this job. It's, um... Yeah, it's a bit more complicated than the Falcon, but easier at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, obviously the wiring's more complicated. The way things are fastened are much easier to get off. But just in the... There's another bunch of clips down there, look. There's one there, or there's three of those. And then there's the plastic trim ones. They would have a full magazine catalogue of different clips in this thing. I mean, Ford and Holden used clips, but Struth, not to the extent these guys did. So just remember where everything went is um, is going to be a bit of a challenge. But I, I think I can do it. I feel capable. But, you know, I mean, if it doesn't turn out well, it is a daily beater. So, uh, oh, another thing. I've got to take the filler out. I need to paint all in here and take off the fuel filter. Oh, you can see the fumes have disintegrated the glove that was there when it was outside. And really sort of undo... The, what do you call it? all those pipes? That's all your fuel lines and return lines and there's hydraulic lines, all sorts of stuff there. I lied about something, but I don't think I can do anything about it. I wasn't going to get anything plated with this car and everyone said, oh yeah, sure thing. And you were right, I was. You know, I've got three streamer loads of stuff here. Oh gosh, this mess. I'll tell you what guys, you don't want to work like me. Don't ever take a leaf out of my book. Um, yeah, there's all these. These sorts of things are good because you can get them done. It doesn't affect the plastic. So I was going to get all of them done, but we're in isolation right now. So term break finished early, and I've got to write resources for online teaching. And that means that if Warners are close, which they might close, they might not, but if they do close and my stuff's in there, I'm screwed. I can't put the car together. So I might just... Like, none of the interior stuff I was going to get plated. It was only cosmetic stuff in the engine base. So what I'm going to do is once we're painted, we'll put it all back together. And if there's anything staring me in the face I don't like, I can just take it off and plate it later. Just got a heat gun. I'm taking this decal off here. Um, didn't realise this was so damaged around here. It's kind of pushed in, but I'm going to have to fill that. Someone's just got a rental can down there and left it at that. But, um, yeah, I'll have to have a look at that. But yeah, I couldn't just leave this little this chunks out of it and scratches all over the place. Being a dark colour, it's fairly obvious too. Um, given the damage on the windshield, it's best if we don't take these windows out and we just paint around it. That's all I can do. There's four bonded screens. And we'll do one, but we're not doing the rest. Right. So it's a nice sunny day and we're in the lockdown because of the coronavirus, so what better time is there to do bodywork on the old Starly? Good thing about this car is it's small, so I can do what I need quite easily. All right, so I've nearly got it all done. The base primer and color is very stable. There's your, there's your clear coat. There's no way you can paint on top of that. I mean, we did on the little blue car, um, we just, basically, where's a good example of it? Oh, probably over there. See there, we did that sort of thing. We're not doing it on this. This thing lives outside, or is going to live outside. So, when you're sanding clear, it's white. Whether you're doing it wet or dry, the clear always comes off white. Um, and when you start getting to the blue stuff, you know you're in the colour then. But we're through it all there. The blue is only very, very thin. The clear is actually quite thick. Um, and you can see all that's white. That's because we haven't even got through it yet. 
So, um, oh, gee whiz. Um, so yeah, it's coming off in sheets. You can see it sort of blur, sheet blew off in here somewhere. There it is there, just there. And um, you know, that's the problem with it. It's just flaky, horrible stuff that'll, you know, sit under the paint and cause issues later. So I'll take it all off the A pillars, um, but the rest of it's stable on the car. The rest of it's all right. So I can just, as I said before, I can just keep back. But I want to avoid this sort of thing. Um, the other thing I noticed is this car is blue inside that lip, so in the sunshine we'll see it. So I'm just going to mask the window off in there, poke it down with a bone, just shoot a bit of primer and a bit of colour in there. Another thing with these, which I forgot about when I got underneath, they're blue underneath too. Um, it's all right to have a car a different colour underneath, um, particularly if it's like a dark blue, it's not cleared or anything, it's not metallic, it's just an underneath colour. Holden used to do this with, um, at the end of each day of manufacturing, they'd throw all the paint in a vat and it made this, it's like plasticine, when you get different coloured plasticines and you give them to the kids and they mix it all up and it has a murky purple colour. That's what Holden used to do with their cars, and they used to shoot them in the firewall and underneath. So yeah, we're still going to get rid of that. We're still going to get rid of that. Door paintwork is stable, so we don't have to worry about that. But the front guard, one of them, I think it's this one here, the left, is all flaky as well. So we'll get into that as well. This stuff here is remarkable. It's this paper, and it's from Milsom's. It's a dry paper, an 80 grid. And I've done half this room, this roof and really dug into it. And it's still really good, really usable. So it's the Long Life VC 150 80 grit. And that's available through Milsom's and it's very competitively priced. It's actually really cheap. So I got a few cheats of that. Um, even there's a little dent. Now, look, see that? That wouldn't bother me, but I'll fill what I see. And if I see any other small ones after I've painted it, will be do. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. So we keep going. We've done all the phosphoricking. And, yep, into bodywork. Here's our flaky guard, it's the driver's one, or the right hand one, not the left. But underneath here, you can see Toyota have actually painted it. And you can see where the other wash has been. So I'm going to do the same thing, in that I'm going to tighten it down, right, oh, right, that was handy, right where it was, so I know it's in the right spot. And what that'll allow me to do, I'll be painting over bolts and I hate painting over bolts, but they did, so bugger it. So that's got to be nigh on perfect there. I'll just get my other glasses and just make sure. But I can see. And the other thing I'll do, I'll tighten it down and it'll let me get rid of all this flaky nonsense. Can you see up here where my finger is? Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, there you go. And any dents. I think the guards are pretty well dent free. But... Looking at all the dents on the car and the flaky paint, there's no way I could have just cleared it. It had to be repainted. So, you know, I mean, people are probably going to be fairly critical of what I've done, but yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't have to do it if they don't want. And I'm getting sort of into these trashy 90s cars because they're reliable and they're really, really good to drive. So, I'm just going to go around, do this up. If I really don't like them, I can take them out, just throw them in a thing of thinners. Given that we're not going to be plating anything, means the assembly is going to be a lot quicker anyway. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> this will hold it nice and still while I body work it on. I'll sort of do it up in the A pillar and also there's a bolt down here that can go in. And we should be well on the way. I think that's a bit better. Okay. It was pushed in. Um, yeah, I can see it there. That's a bit better. Still a little bit out, but... I think it'll be right though, because I've got the basic shape of the back. Um, it's a little 
tucked in there. So I'm going to go around the spot fill the doors. This one's pretty good. It was just turned in there. It had obviously been opened onto something and sort of just put a little V in it. And I've got that out. That's a bit better. That was one I did. <laughs> I pulled it apart and I've got no room, so I'm just banging crap around everywhere. And I gave it a dent, so that's all right. I can fix that. The rest of it, I'm looking at it under fluoros, and the best way to look at anything is under fluorescent light. That clear hasn't peeled, but it does look a bit sus. So I might take the clear off these. There's a small mark there, but you know, I'm getting carried away, I guess. It's just a daily, so you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but. When you work on something, you always look at it and think, well, I want to be proud of it, even though it's a crappy car. Oddly enough, we um, the red one that um, I pulled all the parts off and cobbled back together got $2,400. So I have offered that. I didn't bother going back for a second offer because, you know, with the coronavirus and all this sort of stuff happening, time is of the essence, and that's pretty good news. So when we finish this one, we'll have to do the light blue one because that's got to go. And so again, I'll take the power steering off. I've got everything here to put manual steering back on that and take the power pack out and all that sort of business. And get rid of that and stick most of that stuff in boxes because by then, this one will be good to go. This is a standard filler. Just a polyester uh, filler. It's got a hardener in it now. And there's also a fine. I'm just using this to sort of skate over the top here. Um, just to smooth it out, it's got some battle scars there, but I didn't want to use a fine fill here because I wanted something a little bit heavier duty. Just to go over it. And... I mean, you don't need to do this, this is stupid. And of course, if I do, and I've got a habit of throwing big heavy things in these cars, so I'll probably chip it, but that's the reason I'm using this stuff. It's a little bit stronger than the other. Although it does have a habit of getting air bubbles in it so it doesn't matter hello charlie hi i love the smell of bog everyone um we call it bog americans we call, call it bog. americans um, call it bondo i'm just sort of going around etching bare metal areas there's one down here this is not going to be very pretty but Um, oh, there's one over there. Uh, what it does is, uh, Edge Primer has phosphoric acid in it, and it'll bite into the bare metal. Um, so all the bare metal areas have to just be sort of splashed over with a bit of etch. I didn't do that well, I didn't clean that well that bit. Um, so for example, the battery around some of the edges in the forward part of the gutters where the windscreen lip is. Um, you can see the imperfections there where the rust was and we got rid of most of that and used a basically phosphoric acid any of the bits like this on that that was all sort of twisted and terrible so i just filled it and of course there was a bit of up and down bizzo going there so we just thrown some edge on that too so um i think that's it for that one i've just got to rub back the inside very haphazardly it doesn't have to be professionally done <laughs> Um, just rub it back a bit, and what that will allow us to do, I'm going to put my gun down, is it going to stay there? It will now. Uh, what that'll do um, is it'll just give us a key for the primer to stick to. So I haven't rubbed back any of this yet. I don't care. We'll just use a bit of 400 just to scratch it up a bit and the primer will stick to it. We're not going to go through the wedges or anything like that. Um... So the edge prime is really only important for areas that are obviously bare metal. And so there was some down on this forward edge here. Uh, that's just a bit of muck. And we've got to wash it all down, then tack rag it, and all this sort of other stuff. But you know what? That's going to be fine. You know, for what we're using the car for, it's going to be absolutely fine. Um, it's just important we keep that bare metal protected. So, uh, from now, we're going to do inside the jams and everything we've got to do behind the doors prime them all and rehang them and then we can start throwing some color around this is a shame that rear quarter is totally munted this car was so straight 
The lady was nice though, so I let her go. I said, look, thanks for being honest. Don't worry about it. Uh, we've got to get this in too. This is on its last tank of fuel. So it's still got three quarters of a tank in it. So once I use that up a bit, we'll get this in and take all the goodies out that we want and make that horrible phone call. So isolation, yes. we've got a home salon. <laughs> and I'm getting a haircut. <laughs> but it feels weird. <laughs> and Rose just had a haircut. And is Alana getting one? I don't think so. Oh. Sorry, that was oh. my mouth. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, we don't want to go to salons and get coronavirus, so we're just... They're all closed anyway. Like just Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Like nothing's open apart from Coles. Radio. Prime time, Starly. What I'm doing, I'm just going over the doors, and I've done a real half ass job. Um, look, I'm too close to the cupboard. So if I go off camera, it's because I'm watching what I'm doing, not watching what I'm filming. So I'm just going to dust around. Okay. It doesn't have to be thick. Just something to cover the blue. See that? That's a problem. Um, that's what happens when you're a bit half-assed about something. You get errors all over the place. I'm going to keep going. Uh, just dust it on. I haven't even cleaned that off properly. This is just a touch up gun. Uh, I can see more bloody. Look at that. Whoa, fish eyes. Um, now look. I cleaned some parts that were important, like in the jam. But, I did get lazy. Let's face it, you can see that, right? Anyway, I'll be back in a sec. I'm going on a point, so you can just sort of, you know, do corners like that. Mainly for the plenum chamber. I can stand up in here. I've got the air probably turned down a bit too much, but... Um... I don't think it matters too much. Yeah, there you go. Get right in there. We don't want blue. I can get the other side from inside the engine bay. Sorry about the camera work. I'm watching what I'm doing. Gotta run, better. Um, that should do it. Uh, just go in that lip. I'm just going around checking. I've done around the window, around the jam. I haven't done the other side yet. Um, just checking. Well, hang on, come back. Just checking a few things. I'm just down here. Ah, go on, get on there, you son of a gun. Actually, um, a reasonably complicated thing to paint because of all the bits and pieces. I'm probably marking that all up. That present themselves as quite easy to miss. So this is just a bit of primer. Uh, did I mark that up? Yes I did. There we go. Uh, that should be about it, I reckon. It'll do. So, we've got the doors. There we go, missed a bit there. Um, this is just ridiculous. Overkill. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. But, um, tomorrow I'll be able to flip these over and do the other side properly. Um, there's remnants of tape. I haven't done this very well. Um, there's remnants of tape there and you can see through it. None of that matters. It's sort of covered up. But I just, I don't like that sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like, I want it to look good. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter, it's not important. Ooh, I scratched it. There we go. Um, we can't be as sort of haphazard as this when we're doing the final coat. Obviously, we've got to be a lot more careful, and I'm not being very careful. Um, this repair here is... Oh, I'll just run out. That repair there is very so-so. 
but yeah, I can revisit that, I don't care. Um, so, I'm just using a touch-up gun for those small bits. Now I've sort of done that, oh, I can use a full-size gun on the other side, doesn't matter. Tomorrow, what we'll do is we'll scratch up a lot of the inside of it. we we'll use a full-size gun, shut the door, put the respirator on, and just shoot it inside. And also the guards, the roof, the rear quarters, the doors, they can all be shot. And the bonnet and tailgate I'm going to do after I've put the green on the inside of this. So once all that's all primed, we'll flip them back over, do the green around the inside here, and the same with that door, around the jams, hang the doors, and then we'll paint the whole car. <sighs> that's the plan. <laughs> That's the plan. So, um, it is looking fairly good. I'm quite happy with that. Um, this is not mixed to the point where I'm going to be rubbing it back. I'm just priming it. That's all I'm using it for. I'm not going to start wet sanding this car. I'm really not interested. Um, or at least blocking back primer. If it's got scratches and bits and, bits and pieces in it, so be it. I don't care. Um, but it is coming along very, very well. We have a brew. Yes, we have a brew. Right. Do you reckon I got carried away? <laughs> the, um, that's gone brown. The sand didn't even beneath the spare wheel. Ah, yeah, we got carried away. It's very thin up the back there, you can see that. It doesn't matter, the headlining covers that. And the engine bay's done. Actually, I missed a bit. Oh, nice, over there. I missed a little bit, so I'll just lick over that. Not literally, but the problem is now, everything's ready to go. There's the crash bar there. The doors, the fuel filler over yonder. I can't find the bloody tack rags. I bought a bunch of them. And do you think I can find them? No, I cannot. So I've got to look for the tack rags, give it a wipe down, we can start shooting the primer on the outside of the car, and then that's primed. Hmm, tack rags. There's one. I need more than one now, I reckon. I bought four of them. Tack rags. Can't read. Ah, oh, it's an interesting there. Man, you bastard. Look. Insect in there. The problem with me is I've got no room, look. This is a go, it's not a workshop. Mm, this is getting very cool. Mm. Is that it? Yeah. What are the duty cycle on that compressor is? I've seen something else. Hang on a minute. Can't reach. Yeah. Hey. 
Hopefully. Hmm. Hope that I'm running it. Stylo, all in primer, inside and out, which is ridiculous, but I'm ridiculous. Um, it feels lovely and smooth. There are a couple of screw ups in it, and they will probably show through the paint. That primer's a bit thin on the roof there. I saw a scratch here, and there's one in the door that I saw. Got Buckley's of seeing it now. Let me just go and get a light. Um, but they will show you the best way. Um, looking along it with light. I'm not going to get into the whole thing of. Oh, there it is. Yeah, actually, I might. That does look shit. The rest of it. The rest of it looks fine. This is the one that was folded over, I think. There's a scar there. See that scar? Yeah, it's ugly. I think we better do something with that. I don't think we can paint that, but that's not going to stop me hanging it on the car and just re repairing it on the car. That's the worst of it. The rest of it, there's a couple of little scratches because I got lazy with some of the blocking back. But you know what? I really don't think it matters that much. I just don't. I think it'll be fine. Um, it is a beater, essentially. Not that people go to those lengths with a beater, but I don't know. I think it's fine. I'm not going to get carried away with it. I hate doing body work. Um, we've also got, um, yeah, some screw ups up here. I might just sand them out and just leave it. One there. Too. That's why I like it in one colour so you can really see what you've got and what's left. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I think basically what we'll do tomorrow, I'm going to do the green and the jams. Um, I might paint the inside of it tomorrow actually, but not thickly. I, I don't mind wasting half a litre of paint, but anything over that I'll, I'm not prepared to waste. So I'll do the engine bay tomorrow, I'll do inside the car tomorrow, I'll do the jams. Flick the doors over to the underside of the doors, and then the doors can get fitted. Um, and uh, it's all good. We can start putting it together soon. Anyway, we still haven't got the tailgate started yet. That's easy. This is straight as an arrow, this thing. There's no peely paint or dents or anything on it. That is scuff and paint, basically. Um, and the bonnet. The bonnet does need a repair. But, yeah, who cares? We can put most of it together without the bonnet anyway. So, hope you enjoyed this. Um, take good care of yourselves. Enjoy a classic. Not that this is anything like a classic, but I kind of like it. Um, so yeah, take good care of yourselves. Enjoy a classic, and I'll see you soon. Cheers. With these things, these filters get so blocked up. Hang on, I'm going to take this out. Um, shelf life of 12 months on these respirators. I put that in... February last year, so it's due. And I use this as a particle mask too, but it's pretty well spent. Um, I do have, uh, I do have a couple here. Ugh, a couple, I think I've only got two left actually. Let's have a look. Um, I'll put some fresh ones in. Yeah, I have got two left. 
I might put those in tomorrow before I start doing the green and it'll catch a little bit more but they're great masks the 3M ones well worth the money <sighs> doors hey anyway see you around What do you reckon? She haven't. She's just... <laughs>